previous lecture of classical mechanics particularly the section lagrangian formulation of classical mechanics we will <coughs> have done the idea of some important facts which were the idea of constant now today we are going to just in succession a similar idea which is also very important to formulate uh, the mechanical problem and that is the concept of degrees of freedom as uh, i have written here it is just a definition of degree of freedom you may see the number of independent ways in which a mechanical system can move or change its configuration without violating any constraint which may be imposed is called number of degree of freedom of the system what uh, fact in this definition has been said you may define the Num degree of freedom as the number of ways maximum number of ways in which you can describe the motion of a mechanical system or the configuration change of the system but remember there should be no violation of any constraint imposed on our system when constant imposed remains consistent in that condition in how many ways in a, by how many ways the system can move that determines the degree of freedom of the system in fact uh, when we define degree of freedom or measure the degree of freedom of a system in fact uh, what we measure we measure simply the number minimum number of independent variables needed to describe the system in simple way we can say minimum number of independent variables independent variables needed to needed to describe the motion or the configuration 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 of the system minimum number of independent variables required or needed to describe the complete motion or complete configuration of the system that number in fact determines the degree of freedom of the system let us suppose for an example we consider a particle which is free to move in 3d space we consider a particle which is free to move in 3d space let us suppose the coordinates is x is r o x o y and o z and the particle is free to move in this 3d space in this condition 
if you want to describe the motion of the particle completely at any time t you must need three position or space coordinates that is x y and z if we know these three space coordinate or position coordinate of the particle at a given time in that condition we may completely describe the motion of the particle complete description means if you know x y z it means its its position is determined its position vector will be determined and if simply differentiating x y z we will get uh, velocity and if we we differentiate the velocity we will get motion so so position or position vector velocity momentum acceleration these are different parameters of motion and you know if we know x y and z as a function of t we can completely determine the motion of this system as the minimum number of independent value remember these variables x y z are independent from one another you can't express x in terms of uh, y and z as, or as a linear combination of y and z so these are called independent variables as in this example the minimum number of independent variables required to describe the complete motion of that single particle is 3 so the degree of freedom of the particle free to move in 3d space will be 3 in this example degree of freedom degrees of freedom of a particle particle free to move in 3d space free to move in 3d space each f equal to 3 we denote degree of freedom by the symbol f f equal to 3 what does it mean f equal to 3 in fact this is the measure of, of number of independent variables why is degree of freedom is 3 because as we need three independent three independent variables which are x y and z we need three independent variables which are in fact x y z to describe the motion describe the motion completely completely of the system of the system completely of the system as i have told you that if you know these variables as a function of time if we know x has a function of time just like that y as a function of time t and z also as a function of 
in that condition you may determine components of velocity that is x component of velocity which is denoted as x dot that will be simply dx dt y dot which is y component of velocity this is dy dt and z component of velocity that is velocity in z direction that is z dot this will be simply dz dt these are in fact velocity components one of the important parameters of motion of a particle and further if you differentiate these velocity components simply you will get the components of acceleration that is x double dot this is simply d2x dt square y double dot this is d2y dt square and z double dot this is d2z dt square this determines the components of acceleration of the particle acceleration of the particle and these are the parameters you know here position here velocity and here acceleration and these are the parameters of velocity parameters of motion and so we say that if we know these independent variables x y z for a particle moving in 3d space then we can determine the complete motion of that particle so the degree of freedom of that particle will be equal to 3 this is a most common example in this example as you see there is no restriction there is no constraint imposed on the motion of the particle but now consider the same particle but under a constraint let us impose a constraint on the motion of the particle in such a way that the particle is compelled to move along a definite trajectory in a space that trajectory may be any plane curve. Let us suppose this is the trajectory of our particle and the particle is constant to move along this particle. This plane curve may be a circle, may be an ellipse, may be a rectangle, any plane curve or may be any irregular curves on, along which the particle will move. Now the motion of the particle is not free, it is restricted. We have imposed a constraint, a condition, a restriction on the particle that the particle can move only along a, a specified trajectory in the space. Now trajectory is a special constraint. constraint has been imposed constraint has been imposed and what does this this constraint do imposed and particle is bound to move bound to move along a definite a space curve a space curve along a definite a space curve 
due to the restriction imposed on the particle now the particle is bonded to move along a definite space for example let us consider the particle is bound to move along this circular path as you know to describe the motion of particle moving along this circle at any time t how many coordinates independent coordinates or independent variables we need generally people say two that is x and y if the circle lies in x y plane but that is wrong in fact two variables x and y are definitely needed to describe the motion of the particle along this circular path but in that condition the x and y are not independent from one another as you know the equation of the circle equation of the circle is x square plus y square equal to a square where a is the radius of our circle it is radius of the circle and x and y are position coordinates at any point on the circle from this equation it is clear that if we know y we can calculate x and just uh, in reverse sense you can say if we know x we can find y so x and y here are not independent from one another in this equation x and y are dependent variables not independent dependent variables so number of independent variables will be only one and that will be either x or y so when the particle is bound to move along a definite space curve for example along a circle or any other path parabola hyperbola etc then we need only one independent variable to describe the motion so in this case the degree of freedom of the particle will be simply one not three not two but this will be one so in this case in this condition not case in this condition what do you mean by in this condition that is the condition is particle is bound to move along a particular or given a specified space curve so in this condition degree of freedom degree of freedom of the particle this will be f equal to 1 this these are some important examples you may take an uh, another important example uh, that is another important example of a rigid body moving along Move, not moving, but uh, you say rotating about uh, its axis, a fixed axis. Let us consider a rigid body, and this rigid body is rotating about a fixed axis. This axis does not change its orientation in the space, so this is called fixed axis. And if the body is rotating about this fixed axis in a space this body will have only one degree of freedom why because as the body is rigid so position of any point is fixed 
and if you consider any particles let us consider p and the body is rotating after some after some time this particle will change its position and it will be say here at p dash and there will be a rotation of the radius vector of the particle say by angle phi this is in fact called angle of rotation to describe the motion of this rigid body we need only this angle of rotation and as only one independent variable which is phi to describe the motion of this rigid body is necessary or is required or is needed so we can say that the degree of freedom of a rigid body rotating about a fixed fixed axis in a space is 1 a rigid body rotating rotating about an axis not only axis but fixed axis fixed axis in a space has degree of freedom f equal to 1 and why 1 as i have told you that to describe the motion of this rigid body we need only one independent variable which is denoted by phi and that is called rotation angle so number of independent variables independent variable equal to 1 or what is that variable that is phi which is angle of this is angle of rotation angle of rotation since only one variable is needed to describe the motion of this rigid body so we say that its degree of freedom is 1 in this from these examples now one fact is clear that when over whenever constraints are imposed on a system the degree of freedom of the system is decreased and if the degree of freedom of system will be decreased the number of equations of motion to describe the motion of the system will be consequently decreased and if number of equations of motion to describe the system is decreased definitely the solution of problem dynamical problem will become easier and convenient so we can conclude we conclude that imposing constraints in a way of simplifying the problems mathematically in that the number of equations of motion are reduced to the same number as the number of degree of freedom it means ki i just uh, symbolically i write it imposition of in position of constraints imposition of constraints reduces reduces 
नंबर ऑफ इनडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल्स विच आर रिक्वायर्ड टू डिस्क्राइब द स्टेट ऑफ मोशन ऑफ द सिस्टम imposition of constants reduces the number of independent variables and consequently reduces reduces the equation of motion reduces the number of equation of motion number of equation of motion and when we need a, a smaller number of equations of motion the solution of problem will be easier or convenient it makes it makes the solution of dynamical problems dynamical problems more convenient more convenient now let us consider a system having n particles consisting of n particles we consider a system consisting of n particles for simplicity we have we are uh, we are considering discrete distribution of particles but in most of the dynamical system the distribution of particle is continuous but for the sake of simplicity let us consider here the particle distribution is discrete discrete the number of particles is n n equal to number of particles subject to to k in dependent in dependent here the word independent is very meaningful independent constants remember constants may or may not be independent here we we are talking only about the independent constant when we will study the rigid body dynamics we will see there that constant imposed in case of rigid body is not independent from one another so uh, for the sake of simplicity here we are considering k constraints imposed on the system and these all k constant k is number of constant these all k constants are independent from one another in this condition we can express the constants imposed on the system by mathematical equations which is called equation of constant and uh, how these equations we will express let us see it n number of particles subject to k independent constants and if we express if we express uh, 
the constraints if we express the constraints in terms of the in terms of the mathematical equation equations of the form here the word if is not uh, appropriate we express the constants in terms of the terms of the mathematical equations of the form if k constants are imposed on the system then we have a liberty to express these k constants in terms of mathematical equations and what are the forms and how, or what are those mathematical equations we can write these equations as g1 of x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 so on xn yn zn xn yn zn and possibly t and this equal to say a1 a1 a is a constant a1 here in fact x1 y1 z1 this these are the space or position coordinate of first particle x2 y2 z2 are the three position coordinates of the second particle and like that x n y n z n these are the position coordinates of the nth particle and uh, it is possible that the constant imposed on the system may explicitly depend on time or it may not be an explicit function of time here for generality we have taken that uh, t is involved here but in most of the problem you will see that there, there is no t in such equations again for the this is equation of the first constraint imposed on our uh, system and now the equation of the second constraint you will write g2 of x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 so on x n y n z n just like above and t and this equal to a2 and so on. in this way we may write the equation of the kth constants g k of you may repeat this that is x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 so on xn yn zn t and this equals a k this equals a k
now we can see that these equations may be written in terms of position vector in some compact form or the above equations may be written like this may be written like this g1 g1 r1 r2 so on rn t and this equal to a1 g2 r1 r2 so on rn t and this equal to a2 and so on for kth constant the equation will be gk r1 r2 so on rn t and this equal to a k here it is obvious that when you write r1 instead of x1 y1 z1 because you know r equal to yeah, r1 equal to x1 i plus y1 j j plus z1 k so r1 represents the three position coordinate x1 y1 z1 like that r2 represents x2 y2 z2 and so on in most convenient form or uh, you may say in most compact form the aim of all equations can be written as in compact form in compact form the all the above equations we may write as g j of r i t and this equal to a j all of the above equations have been written by this single equation in a most compact form here you may say the subscript i stands for 1 2 so on n and j in fact represents the different constants 1 2 so on k if there are k constants imposed on the system then the value of j will run from 1 to k in this condition as the k constants are imposed on the system and the number of particles in the system was n and you know if each particle is free to move in space each particle has three degree of freedom each particle has three degree of freedom number of particle is n so the total number of degree of freedom of the system will be 3n but only when no constant is imposed on the system but here in this example we have taken that there are k constraints imposed on the system hence the degree of freedom will be just decreased by that k so the effective number of const effective number of degree of freedom after imposing k constants on the system of n particles will be what
that will be simply 3n minus k so after imposing after imposing k constants k constants the degrees of freedom the degrees of freedom f will be equal to what this will be 3n minus k 3n minus k remember we have considered the system of n particles if no constant were imposed on that system the number of degree of freedom will be 3n but after imposing k independent constants on the system the degree of freedom is reduced by k and it becomes 3n minus k this equation uh, the a of so a of equation a in equation a you may say g1 g2 gk are k specified functions of 3n coordinates let us write it in equation a gi where i not j but but g j g j where j is equal to 1 to so on k k r the is specified are the is specified k functions functions of 3n coordinates 3n coordinates and and possibility of time possibly be possibility possibility of time possibility of time if if constants constants depend on depend on the time explicitly depend on the time explicitly this is all about uh, the degrees of freedom and 
I stop my lecture today uh, after this conclusion and in next uh, lecture I will discuss a most important concept of generalized coordinates in classical mechanics.